Hello and welcome to another session on cyber security. In this session, we'll be taking a look at uh, the different uh, Wi-Fi protocols. So what are those protocols? We look at wired equivalent uh, privacy, Wi-Fi protected access version 1 and Wi-Fi protected access version 2. We'll take an in-depth look at uh, what these protocols are and how they are uh, useful in encrypting the network traffic. So what is Wi-Fi? When you talk about Wi-Fi, we all use our uh, routers at home. So we have a router and uh, it's a wireless uh, router. Say we can think of a wireless router like TP-Link router, which you might be having at your home. And this uh, you call that to be an access point and you'll be connecting your mobile phones, your laptops, everything. So there'll be various devices connected to this access point. And for this connection, what is important is you agree upon a fast phrase, a password we can say. So we have that fast phrase um, in the HP, in the access point, and also the same fast phrase for all the devices that connect to this uh, router. So how this connection happens is using this password we key in initially, and that is being agreed upon by all the devices that connect to this router. And when you talk about the wireless communication, the entire communication happens using radio waves. And uh, the band here is uh, 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. So we have two bands which we can select and we'll be uh, normally going on with the 2.4 gigahertz with the home routers. And uh, we also have uh, channels uh, for these communications. So we have channel one, channel numbers uh, range from one, two, three like that. And what do you mean by a specific channel is it uh, determines the frequency of the waves uh, in a specific communication so that uh, when two devices communicate in two different channels, uh, they don't overlap with each other. So basically what is Wi-Fi communication or wireless fidelity is all about is a networking technology that is wireless that allows devices like computers, smartphones and tablets to connect to the Internet. And uh, here the, the entire communication happens using radio waves and it is very important for us to encrypt uh, the data that is um, being communicated between two devices because anybody can intercept these radio waves and then hack the information that is available. So we have taken a very brief look at Wi-Fi. Now let's go to the protocols. We'll understand what is uh, WEP, which is a protocol which is used for encrypting traffic between the access point and the uh, client devices in a Wi-Fi network. Now let us move on to WEP. So what is a WEP protocol? It is called as Wired Equivalent Privacy and it is a security protocol used in Wi-Fi networks to protect data transmitted over wireless channels. We call it wired equivalent privacy because it was designed to provide the same level of security similar to that of wired networks. So this protocol was introduced in 1999 as the initial security standard for Wi-Fi networks. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what this protocol is all about. So here we have a client and uh, we have our access point which you can think uh, that to be of your router and uh, both these uh, devices uh, share a fast phrase or the shared secret key so the length uh, is here 10 characters or 80 bits so that is what uh, they agree upon initially and uh, using this uh, shared uh, secret key we also add a 24 bit uh, initialization vector which is a random number and we feed uh, these two things, the shared secret key and 24-bit IV to our uh, encryption algorithm RC4 uh, encryption which we are using. And RC4 encryption in turn generates a 128-bit key stream. And this key stream is then used with the plain text. So here we have plain text and uh, this plain text, uh, upon this plain text we compute this checksum called uh, CRC checksum. This is a cyclic redundancy checksum 32 which uh, is uh, used for integrity check such that the mess message is not altered uh, during its transit so we use crc for that and uh, this plain text is taken upon and crc is computed so after computation of the crc the plain text uh, along with the crc uh, is XORed with the key stream 
and now we generate the uh, encrypted packet and we send this encrypted packet along with the initialization vector 24 bit initialization vector to the access point and the access point has got the shared secret key and it uses the IV and um, so now it can uh, use the same RC4 algorithm for decryption so it's uh, using RC4 IV and then the WEP shared secret key for decrypting so this is uh, called wired equivalent uh, privacy protocol and uh, it had its own uh, disadvantages that is IV reuse since IV was only 24 bits uh, this was reused uh, for uh, encrypting packets and uh, hackers were able to perform IV attacks they were able to uh, identify what that IV can be using IV attacks because IV was reused for uh, different uh, packets and they were able to uh, recover the key too so WVP had its own disadvantages and it was discontinued in 2004 due to its uh, security vulnerabilities and this led to the next algorithm that is Wi-Fi protected access. Now let us take a look at the next protocol Wi-Fi protected access. This protocol was released in 2003 as a replacement for wired equivalent privacy WEP because WEP had its own vulnerabilities and it was prone to attacks. So WPA Wi-Fi protected access is a security protocol designed to address the vulnerabilities of WEP. So here it introduces dynamic encryption keys and a message integrity check to improve security. Let's take a quick look at what WPA protocol is all about. So here we have our uh, client and access point as usual. And now the pre-shared key, the passphrase is of uh, anywhere between 8 to 63 characters. So we have increased the length of the pre-shared key. It's actually 8 to 63 characters and uh, that is one of the changes that has been done and using this uh, pre-shared key we will be deriving our pairwise master key which is of 256 bits we call this PMK and uh, using the pairwise master key plus a lot of uh, other factors like initialization vector of 48 bits plus other factors we will be generating our session key so this uh, session key uh, will be used with our RC4 encryption algorithm to encrypt data packets. We will also be using MIC message integrity check as a means for checking whether the encrypted packet has been altered uh, in transit. So we will be computing an MIC and then we will be uh, sending this encrypted data along with the MIC to our access point so what our access point contains is the pre-shared key so they agree upon a pre-shared key the length can vary between 8 to 63 characters that is already present in our access point so using this pre-shared key there's this uh, pairwise master key that is uh, generated which is of 256 bits and uh, pairwise master key plus IV plus other factors will lead to the session key so initially the client and the access point agree upon the session key which is used for encryption and decryption of the packets. We will see how these uh, session keys are agreed upon in our coming slides and that is done using WPA handshake. So there is a session key that is generated out of our pairwise master key and the other factors that is also used for decrypting. So how decryption happens is first this MIC message integrity check code is uh, computed to check whether the data has been encrypted and to check whether the data has been altered in transit once when the MIC check is fine decryption happens using the session key so what are the key changes here when compared to WEP is uh, WPA uses uh, temporal key integrity protocol so what is the use of temporal key integrity protocol is it generates uh, session keys uh, it, it, it introduces generation of uh, dynamic keys and uh, these keys uh, keep changing for packets that is the main change and also we have uh, the length of the pre-shared key to be uh, up to 63 characters here and uh, we have our high V which is of 48 bits whereas in wired equivalent privacy which is uh, uh, 
uh, only 24 bits. So these are some of the changes and we also used the uh, MIC message integrity check here whereas in WVP we used uh, CRC32 checksum. So what are the key differences I just highlighted here uh, when compared to WEP? Uh, a new key is generated for every packet. So dynamic key generation uh, was possible in WPA and the initialization vector here is 48 bits when compared to 24 bits of WEP and pre-shared key is up to 63 characters which is again a change and here we are using message integrity check MIC to check whether the packets are getting altered in transit. So these are the uh, changes when compared to WEP and uh, even WPA was uh, prone to vulnerabilities and then uh, it uh, got replaced with another protocol, the version 2, Wi-Fi protected access version 2, which was introduced in 2006. So the main changes here is uh, WPA2 uses uh, more robust uh, advanced encryption standard for encryption. Whereas in WPA version 1, we are using RC4 encryption. Here we are using W. Here we are using advanced encryption standard. And uh, WPA2 also supports a CCMP that is counter mode uh, with cipher block chaining message authentication code. Whereas in WPA we were using MIC. So these are the changes and WPA2 is uh, very widely used and uh, it uses the advanced encryption standard. Now let us take a look at the next concept that is called the four way WPA handshake. So what is the use of this uh, handshake processes? It involves exchange of authentication credentials, negotiation of encryption parameters and generation of session keys between the client and the access point. So initially the client and the access point uh, get associated with each other. And then there is uh, this key called pairwise transient key. See we all know pairwise master key that is 256 bits which is established from the pre-shared secret key that is uh, pre-shared key. So this we have known from the previous slides. So from pairwise uh, master key there is one more key that is established that is the pairwise transient key PTK. And from this PTK we actually derive the session keys. Likewise the access point also uses some parameters along with this uh, pairwise master key. It generates this uh, pairwise transient key and it uses that as a session key. So both the client and the access point use the same session key. Client uses the session key for encryption whereas the access point uses the session key for decryption. So the session keys we have seen that uh, in the previous slides. So how these session keys are actually generated is using pairwise transient keys. And four-way WPA handshake helps us to establish this key called pairwise transient key from which we use a key derivative function and generate the session keys. So we'll be looking at how client and access point uh, actually comes out with this pairwise transient keys from their ends. So here is the visualization for WPA handshake. So we have the client and the access point. At this stage, the client is already associated with the access point. And uh, the access point now generates a random number that's called nonce. And it's uh, sending that to the client. Now the client, what it does is it generates its own nonce. That is number used once. It's a random number that the client generates and it also takes the random number from the access point and uh, the client has got its own pairwise master key which is 256 bits that is generated from the pre-shared key and uh, it knows its uh, MAC address and the client also knows the access point's MAC address. So using all these parameters this uh, pairwise transient key is generated. After generation of the PTK the client uh, shares the nonce, the number that it has generated along with this MIC code that is message integrity check code. What are the use of this? Uh, this is uh, just used to check whether the 
data that is transmitted has been tampered with or halted during transit. So this MIC code, message integrity check code, along with the client nonce is sent to the access point. See these uh, nonce, that's numbers uh, generated by AP and client is unencrypted. And uh, here we have an MIC that's sent. And uh, what the AP access point does is, it takes the client nonce that it has received. It has uh, generated its own uh, nonce. And uh, the AP has got its uh, pairwise master key of 256 bits that is generated from the pre-shared key. And the client MAC address and AP's MAC address is known. So using all these parameters, it generates its own pairwise transient key. So client and AP now have their own pairwise transient key. And after generation of this, the AP sends a group token key along with an MIC. So what this uh, group token key is all about, an access point will be connected to many devices, right? And uh, there can be a broadcast message happening to all the devices from the access point. That is a broadcast sent to all the devices or else a multicast, which is uh, sent to a specific group of devices uh, within that uh, network. So the group token key is used for broadcast and multicast messages. So a group token key is shared uh, to the client and after receiving the GTK, the client now is ready with its PTK and GTK. And uh, after uh, receiving these two things, the client sends an acknowledgement which completes the four-way handshake and uh, the access point now has got um, uh, PTK and GTK. So from now on, the communication will happen using the pairwise transient keys. So there is a session key that we have, which we derive from the pairwise transient keys. And then we'll be using that for further encryption between the client and the access point. So this is called the four-way WPA handshake. And when we are talking about uh, Wi-Fi hacking, we'll be capturing this handshake information between the client and the access point. So an hacker will be able to capture this information that is shared between the client and the access point. See, nonce is unencrypted. So an hacker will know the nonce. And uh, the client MAC address and access point MAC address an hacker can get by using some monitoring devices. What is not known to the hacker is a pairwise master key. So the hacker is going to take a list of commonly used passwords Say you can think of these passwords to be the pre-shared keys and then you will start generating a PMK from uh, every commonly used password. And then you can now attempt uh, generation, right? You can use uh, nonce one, nonce two from the, this is nonce from the access point, nonce from the client. And then uh, uh, he knows the client MAC address and then the access points MAC address. So you can go ahead with the generation of the pairwise transient key and uh, by that process you can also crack the uh, password for the access point so wi-fi network password you'll be able to crack once when he is able to generate all these things and if he's able to get the same mic uh, as uh, generated by the access point then you can very well conclude that this specific uh, password or the this specific fast phrase from the commonly used list of passwords it's actually the password for the is actually the password for the wi-fi network so i hope you all have understood what is a wpa handshake and we also seen other important concepts like uh, what is wep what is wpa and what is wpa2 and the key differences between these Wi-Fi security protocols and we have seen how pairwise transient key can be generated uh, using four-way handshake. So with that, we are coming to an end of this session. If you have any questions, you can leave those questions as comments below. I'll be looking at those questions and answering uh, your questions. So with that, we are coming to an end of this session. That's it for now. Take care.